Alex Hansry here, November 21st, 2017. So I'll be covering some cost of living news regarding California and, of course, Portland, which has got an influx of California residents or people fleeing California and New York that have moved to Portland, other places over time that has moved Portland up to uh, one of the most expensive cities to rent in, to try to uh, own a home. But it was very different years ago. And so this is a place that a lot of people are attracted to, especially from L.A. or New York. They see it as a place, you know, which it is with modern living, but also nearby forests, hiking, a sense of greenery. People almost get the uh, um, the fallacy in their own mind that they're they're getting closer to nature because they're moving to Portland, Oregon. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, environmental degradation there, pollution in the air and in the river. So it's the illusion of getting closer to nature. It's just more flight from America's largest cities, New York, Miami, California, Los Angeles, California, specifically San Diego. I've met a lot of people from California in Oregon, uh, in Portland, the city that I used to live in. Uh, so, you know, I left in 2014 for the last time. And what people need to understand is there's an obvious correlation here, which is documented between the period in which Portland got really, really popular and a lot of Portlanders became homeless. It's also one of the worst places to be homeless. It's also one of those places where it seems that there's more mental illness, that there's you know, almost more of a disposition to be mentally ill if you hit the streets there, as opposed to say, oh, I don't know, living off the grid or living somewhere else in another state. So uh, getting out of Oregon, getting out of Portland, Oregon, specifically the city in which I was born in, in 1980 in uh, Good Samaritan Hospital, was very therapeutic and healing does not occur overnight. So um, I would say that this is a city in which a lot of people think they're, um, maybe if they really were living in shitholes, I can see Portland being better than that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but that doesn't necessarily make it uh, spiritual or progressive self-sustaining or sustainable um it's just a lot of people living the rat race uh worshiping money on a on a hamster wheel literally for a certain amount of money to afford a home and that's the dream that a lot of people have it isn't necessarily moving somewhere and becoming a better person or contributing something to that area uh it's it's achieving something on a material level which like i, I can understand but so much of that is is caught up in status and ego. And the reality is that the world's a big place. I think that people should want to uh, develop more conscious communities across the nation. There are certainly some areas uh, in this nation that can use some growth. So, you know, I obviously move somewhere and I don't think everybody should be at the same spot, right? But this is, this is the problem that you have when a lot of people are thinking about the same spot at the same time. So even though Portland's my home, you know, when faced with a zombie apocalypse with literally no border, if you will, and domestic immigrants coming at an alarming rate, which is fine, domestic immigration, state to state, it's what I've done. I left the state that I was born in, the state of Oregon, and now I'm in Colorado, but I know what it's like to be resented as an outsider because I know at one point what it felt like to be a local Portlander to see the writing on the wall, and to feel things change around me um, so dramatically, so quickly, that my days of, of roommate living was over, you know, for renting a room for 300, 400, and, you know, on an average, uh, and that's how a lot of people live, by the way, in Portland, not owning their own home, not renting an apartment, but sharing a home with four or five other people where no one's the owner, but they're all just throwing in 300, 400, and someone else collects the rent. And so, you know, for years, Portland had a reputation, which it doesn't exactly live up to now. Uh, it's the place where young people go to retire. What that meant was living your dream, living within your means, not necessarily owning a home, but just renting something and be able to get by at a pizzeria, be able to get by as a, as a barista, be able to get by. And woo, they did more than just get by the people that got involved in um, the nice restaurants and the bartending. Those are people that I've seen and work with them and hung out with them after work that literally were able to just burn two, three hundred, you know, a night if they wanted to. 
you know, and buying a round of drinks for people. So uh, there are people that have moved to Portland that have ended up doing very, very well for themselves financially. So what it's actually created is less of a happy society and more of a greedy society where so much also revolves around the booty, the worship of the beautiful female form. And that goes a little deeper into how this reality here has affected sexuality, has affected relationships, has affected society and the mental health of men and women, women and men today. So check out the article for yourself. I'll mention a few facts. Again, I ask the question, how much salary do you need in order to, to afford the principal interest taxes and insurance payments on a medium priced home in your metro area? And it gives a list. We'll go over the city by city. So long, long past. We're past the day where it was just simply a matter of, you know, getting a job and thus someone was no longer a bum. We're actually now in the day and age where if you watch the Tent City documentary from KGW, an older woman on disability receiving 700 a month, that's not enough for her to rent something in her own country, in her own state or in her own city. Living homeless on the Springwater Corridor, being replaced, being replaced by what? Domestic immigration from states like California and New York. Okay, not to blame them, right? But this is the way of the world. And if you look at the demographics of the people making up the new Portlanders, you know, they're fleeing the major U.S. cities and they had the money to leave. As a result, in slow motion, many Portlanders, right, are losing the ability to stay in their own homes. We're even talking about baby boomers because they are the ones that are hurting the most. It's the baby boomers. It's not even necessarily the younger generation because when you deal with baby boomers and retirees, some of these people are disabled and they're unable to go back to work. The issue is on their retirement, is their retirement going to increase, right, as their property values explode? Do you know there are people out there that are expected to pay 20000 30000 40000 or more in some of these, you know, what's the average amount that a Portlander will have to pay per year in taxes? That's the greater question. So I think about people like my friend uh, that was my mother's boyfriend uh, many years ago, who's uh, probably in his 60s now. I haven't talked to him in years. Uh, I worry about him. I wonder how he's doing. Um, I wonder how others are doing, how others are surviving that are in their older years that are expected to pay a huge leap and increase in property taxes as their water bills go up, okay, as their garbage bills go up. So we have Providence, Rhode Island at 66,000. We have Austin, Texas at 67,000. It's just an average. We have Riverside, 67,000. Uh, I believe Jordan, who's a Facebook contact, said hello from Riverside. Uh, if you want to get together in Southern California, show me around or some economic opportunities, jobs, things of that nature. Uh, let me know. I'm going to be in Southern California very soon. Sacramento, 71,000. Uh, here we have a lot of these are in California, as I said. So there's been a big flight to Portland, which is really an extension uh, of California in some ways, even though it's a different state. Um, a lot of Californians over time and over the years, uh, have traditionally also been a part of the, the Portland population that has been growing at a particular rate over a number of years. Miami, 71,000. Portland, six, 76,000. Okay, so again, where does that put someone who works at the coffee shop? Where does that put someone uh, who works at the pizzeria? Where does that put someone as far as being able to afford some, something that buses tables? A larger percentage of the overall income will go to rent and a larger percentage of a person's thoughts, actions, and goals will revolve around the money to be able to rent something that they, in most cases, won't even own. Uh, you know, most people that I met never owned their own home in Portland. They were renters in someone else's home, okay, a, a, a renter nation. And I live that. I live that renter nation. And I can literally write a book and tell you about the 10 to 15 different roommate ex 